Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where we get to hopefully be a part of your morning every single day, Monday through Friday as the Teach Better team streams live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And of course, we also are on Teach Better Talk podcast. There are so many episodes there for all of you to learn. So please feel free to head over to wherever you'd like to listen to podcasts subscribe, rate, review, or of course, Joshua Stamper would be so mad if I didn't also ask you to to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have an amazing, amazing guest. I'm so excited, first off, to just interview him in general, like that we could have done this and not recorded it, but also to bring him into our Teach Better family, get him more involved in the network, and also hopefully make a new connection for all of you. So we'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show. Moshe, how are you? Amazing, Ray. It's great to be here. It's really exciting. I'm, I am so thrilled to be officially connecting with you. And I know we talked about this before we went live, but a little shout out to Katie that she's not here, but you have seen her and I on the show before. And I'm so sorry you're only doing this interview with me because she's a ball of fun. She definitely is. Yes. <laughs> so fun. So Moshe, I know that you do so many things. We're only going to be able to touch on, you know, a, a chunk of them. But one thing I'd love to do before we get too far into this uh, show is introduce you to our community here in case they're not already connected because you are active on social media, doing great things. And I know you have so many other ways that we may not see on social media that you support people holistically. So tell me a little bit about what you do and uh, your role in education. Okay, so I'll make it really, it's really simple actually. I started off as a social worker, working in schools, that's it. And that is my primary thing. I have a private practice in New York, but in my first year of working in schools, what I noticed was that there was so much going on in a classroom and I'd be working with these kids one-on-one, -on -one, spending about 45 minutes with them at a time, sometimes a half hour, sometimes a little bit more than 45 minutes. And I'd hear these kids tell me stories. And these stories were for the most part very heartbreaking because they just weren't being seen. They weren't getting heard. And I would speak to their teachers and I would ask their teachers, you know, questions about how the kids were doing. And the teachers just didn't know. They just didn't have the information that they needed to work with me at the level to provide an intervention that would be meaningful. And so kids would be slipping through the cracks and they wouldn't even come to me until it was like a way late in the game problem. So that's really where it started. I I think it's so interesting because, you know, teachers, we, gosh, we do the best we can, oh, but sure. you are, but you're so spot on in even just my own personal reflection of, of students that, I knew were almost like slipping through my fingertips because I didn't have either the time, the knowledge, the capacity, the insert, whatever reason here to truly get to know this child and truly be able to best identify the support they needed. You know, a lot of educators, we make like a thousand decisions a minute. And so many of them, I mean, gosh, we're trying to like get to know our kids and also handle a hundred different things. And so, yeah, in your role, you would be seeing the students for a really focused period of time to really get to know them as human beings, which I'll tell you, I don't mean to speak for all educators, but I think a lot of us are jealous of that. Like that is a very important thing that you get to do. Absolutely. And you know, you know, like you said, like for, there are a lot of different reasons of why teachers can't do this, but the way I started thinking about it was, can we develop a tool that will allow teachers to do this. That was really the key because exactly like you said, you know, to be able to know them at that human level, you know, it's all about the relationships. Everybody knows that good learning comes when the relationship between the teacher and the student is strong. And one of the things that I found that I want to hear what you know more about from you, what you think about this, was that there were so many kids that were telling me 
that they felt that their teachers hated them. And when I would speak to the teachers, sometimes they did. Sometimes they did. <laughs> <laughs> but for the vast majority, they did not. And they were shocked. They were, they were like, why? Why does she think that? Why does he think that? And and then I would explain to them why, because the interactions were just negative. And I came across this amazing research that I love to say, no matter how many times I tell this to people, it never gets old, especially the reaction that I get from people. And I could tell already, Ray, you're going to love this. I first came across this when I was reading Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink. Great book. And he mentioned a fellow named John Gottman. John Gottman is based in Seattle, the Gottman Institute. They study couples. They study relationships. They can watch a couple argue for three minutes and with over 90% accuracy predict if the couple will still be together in 10 years. Whoa. 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 <laughs> How crazy is that? That's crazy. And I'm also reflecting, I'm like, do I want to know my own relationship? Maybe, maybe ignorance is bliss. <laughs> So here's the thing. What was most cool about this research was that they boiled it down to such a simple formula that in a minute you'll be able to do it too. Okay. Mm -hmm. What they did was, is they counted the number of compliments and criticisms that were given. Okay. And what they okay. found, what they found is couples in a good relationship, when they argue, still give five compliments to every criticism. Oh man. It's okay. So, so it's interesting now that you've shared that I know there's been a few different people that I've been able to interview who have said that like one negative comment requires five positive comments to interact. I, I'm sure these are connected in some way that mm -hmm. we're constantly striving to give that positive reinforcement, the positive compliments, because for a child, a negative interaction is so detrimental. That's so interesting to think of how that could be removed and applied to a adult relationship. Yes. Yes. And, and the scariest part was that the divorce rate ratio, meaning those couples that were not going to make it 10 years down the line, 0.8 compliments to every criticism. Oh, so very a drastic. That's so drastic. drastic, drastic difference, drastic difference. And what's even more frightening is that one-to-one, -one is very close to divorce. One compliment for every criticism is, is really bad. So I started thinking about how does that play out with these kids who are struggling? What is their ratio of compliment to criticism that they're getting in their classroom? Mm -hmm. And in that framework, it was really, really frightening to think about because these kids are not getting anywhere near the divorce ratio. They are getting way more negativity than positivity. And when you speak to teachers about this, this is not something that teachers don't want to do. Every teacher totally. wants to do this. Every teacher wants to do this, but they can't because of, like you said, making a thousand other decisions, a minute, you know, an hour, whatever it is, it's just so overwhelming. So the question became for me, can we create a mechanism? Can we create a system or a tool that will help teachers make sure that they know which kids at any given moment need to be prioritized for encouragement, for positive feedback, support, compliments. So, so, so did you make the tool? Does it exist? Are we is it like all of our problems going to be solved after today's episode? Pretty much. Pretty much. Perfect. See, that's perfect. That's what we're going to get into in our team talk section, friends. So stick with us. I do have to tell you, Moshe, the reflection uh, that I'm doing right now internally while you are sharing, I think is why I valued student conferencing as much as I did. Essentially from the beginning of my teaching career to the last day I ever spent as a classroom teacher, my, my change in how I instructed went from essentially no conferencing with students to almost exclusive conferencing for the entire 42 minutes that I had them, which took, there was so much work I had to do in between to make that effective. But what I loved about conferencing was my ability to spit out more positives uh, than ever before and then give the feedback versus I felt like in other means that when I was instructing and not having a one-on-one -on -one or small group conversation, 
I struggled to celebrate the wins. And that's what you're talking about. Like being a part of the victories with students to feel good and then be able to, to partner that with feedback. I'm so excited that you are bringing this to the table. We're going to be right back to talk about this with our team talk because we have to know the magical solution. Our lives will be changed. We'll be right back. back for our teach better today morning show time where we're able to do our team talk which is where we get into educational conversation Moshe is about to solve everything that we've ever needed in life so I don't mean to put pressure on you but you are hitting like I think uh you're you're hitting like an internal nerve of like oh my gosh if we can get teachers connecting with students how can we do this like no wonder you're so busy because this is what drives you. Tell us a little bit about how you're supporting teachers with this idea. So here's the thing, because it really isn't a magic pill. It's something that teachers want to do, but we're actually trained not to do it, right? If you think about how much time you spend preparing for a class, right? How much time would you typically give pr to prepare a lesson, right? Ray, a what did a you do long there? time. Yeah. Long time. Every teacher is going to be like, a ton. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How much time do you spend before the, you know, at the beginning of the day or even the night before thinking about which students need support? Mm, I would say that that's like secondary. Teachers don't get to do that as much. That's where we get into like needing to evaluate formative assessments, all of that. Right. Right. So it's not, we're not trained or supported to prioritize the kids. And that's crazy, by the way, in my opinion, you know, we are, it's, it's literally a system that is pushing us to not prioritize the kids, but to prioritize our own goals of giving over certain lessons. And that's important. I'm not saying, you know, it's school after all, it's, it's the center for education. Kids need to learn skills that, you know, that are going to carry them through their lives. But if we know, and every teacher knows this, that the relationships are that critical, that is the, that is the seed that is the foundation that's that everything is built on when you think back to the great teachers that you had as a kid you don't think to the lesson plan that they think of you think of the connection that human connection so so to start you need to really think in your head that this is going to be a paradigm shift okay i'm now going to take what i used to prioritize and make that secondary and you know what it's like it's like that old adage i think they say from abraham lincoln that if I had six hours to chop down trees, I'd spend four hours sharpening the saw and two hours actually cutting down the trees. Right? Oh, it's, it's, yeah. It's going to be something like that because you're going to be taking, you know, four hours is the bulk of the six hours. It's two thirds of the time. And your primary goal is to chop down the trees. But if you spend the bulk of your time on this foundational skill, it's just going to make the tree chopping part that much smoother and that much more effective. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I am thinking of, you know, the tools they give you when you're in teacher school, right? Where they're like, here's the perfect lesson plan. And it is so much, so integral to grab that standard, break it down into targets, design a dynamic learning experience for students. And, and I understand so much of that is important, right? We're not negating the fact that any of that is good for students. We do believe that should be happening. But the reality is the first question you should be asking before you get into any of that is, well, who are my kids? Do I know them? What do they need? What background knowledge do they have? Like, we do really need to know the students. And I, this is actually a criticism I had in college where I was like, how do you design a lesson plan for people you don't know? And this is exactly what you're speaking to now, you know, decades into our careers, we're still falling into this perfect lesson plan. And it still doesn't have a section that says, are your kids doing well today? And what do they need? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I mentioned earlier is that this is not to 
to blame any teacher. When I started talking to teachers about this, they would get all defensive and I'd be like, listen, you're cool. You know, if I didn't think you were cool, I wouldn't have this conversation with you. Like, you know, you could, you could do this. You could totally, totally do this, but it does require, you know, taking a step back and realizing that we're not prioritizing kids properly. So we need to prioritize kids properly. Okay. So that's, that's the first step. The second step, and this is really what Class Stars is all about. Class Stars is an app that can be downloaded onto a tablet. It's a free download, and you can get a demo class, and you can set up one class just to try it out and to get, you know, to get the feel for it, okay? A lot of people are going to ask that it's similar to Class Dojo, and it's not similar to Class Dojo, okay? If you like Class Dojo, that's fine. You can keep using Class Dojo, but we're very, very different, and I'm going to explain it very clearly because Class Stars is not a point system. Okay, point systems are good for certain kids. But if you've tried to implement the point system class-wide, what a lot of teachers have told me is that the kids who fail in school, for whatever reason, no blame, also fail at the point system, right? They can't do the point system either, right? So this is Class Stars works is, is, you know, revolutionary in two ways. Number one, it's super simple to use. So basically, imagine a screen, imagine a screen where you have pictures of all your kids sitting in the arrangement of your actual classroom. You can customize this kids, however your class is set up, and you have beautiful smiling pictures of your kids. And it's important that they smile and look good when you take their pictures, because when you look at them, you want to reinforce in your brain that image of them, not because they came in that day, you know, in a bad mood or whatever may have happened at home or something like that. You want to see them in a positive way. The most important thing is to see them every day in a positive way and reinforce in your mind a positive image of these kids. Really, really, really important. Okay. And then it works in a very simple way. When you have a positive interaction with a kid, you just swipe up on their picture just like that. And in less than a second, you recorded a time stamped record that you recorded, that you had a positive interaction with this child, okay? If a kid acts out or does something that they aren't supposed to do, you swipe down on that kid, okay? Simple. Sounds easy enough. I, lo I love enough. the ease. Sign me up for anything easy. Love it. Okay. okay. Now, once you get the hang of this and you want some more data, some more information, this is what we call single swipe mode. There's a button on the screen that toggles it to full function mode. And when you're in full function mode, when you swipe up, you get a menu of different types of positive feedbacks that you may have given the child. So you get extra data, but it costs an extra step. So that's the trade-off. More data, more effort. Less sure. effort, think, less data. Fair enough. I think every teacher understands that and appreciates the ability to have the option. I actually yes. really, yes. really love that. Yes. And when you swipe down on full function mode, you get a menu of the classic classroom misbehaviors, you know, like talking, disruptive, you know, not seated, just the basic, general, simple observations of what kids are doing that they aren't supposed to be doing. So, and you can even customize it to have it single swipe for one direction and not the other. So you can really customize it. It's really highly customizable in that sense. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now what happens when you swipe up on a kid is that every child has next to their picture a meter that keeps track of the last two days of positive interactions that you had with that kid. Cool. So you have a running record, and this is tier one. This is everyone in the class needs to be engaged every day at least once, right? If a kid comes to school and sits in your class and gets no personal interaction with you, that's not a good day. But if you greet them and you interact with them and you compliment them and you give them some kind of support, that is a good day. They may not learn that much that day, but they saw you. They were seen by you, even more importantly, right? So tier one is making sure that you are, you know, distributing your attention effectively amongst all the students in your class, making sure that each and every one of them is seen with equality. Yeah, you know, something I really love about this is the teacher accountability for internal reflection is something I think I would really value. It's almost like doing a, it's almost like doing an audit of, I think I'm really good at this, but let's see if I'm really good at this. Like 
even if you're an educator that's like, this is my jam, I'm so stellar in this area, this is the tool you can go to and say, well, let's just make, let's just confirm that that's true. Because I know for myself, if I have 35 kids in the room, I might hand out 30 compliments a day, but if it's always to the same kids and the other students are not necessarily getting that positive interaction, this is a really simple, I love the simplicity, simple visual to be like, hey, you might be compensating one way or the other. Is that an intentional choice? Should you be doing something differently today? Because giving you that two days worth of data, you have the opportunity to fix it. And it gives you it right there to say, hey, are you going to be able to make a change today for this student? I I love the simplicity. I love the opportunity for documentation. And I think this is such a valuable reflection opportunity for teachers to continue to enhance an area they care about. But wait, there's more. <laughs> no, stop. Okay, tell me more. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not at all. And and you brought up an excellent point because like you said, and I don't know if you had an intentionally mentioned these numbers, but if you're giving out 35, if you have 35 kids in your class and you're giving out 30 compliments a day, that means that five kids every day are not getting a compliment. Right. Right. And, and, and the likelihood of you remembering the next day, which those five kids were, because you know what? And a lot of teachers have told me this, like, how many compliments can I give a day? Like, I also have to teach. I also have to do other things. And that's true. That's true. Some teachers will naturally give more compliments. Some teachers will give more compliments and not be able to swipe each time. That's also fine. But you have to make sure that you know what you're doing. Like you said, you know, like you think you know what you're doing. And, and sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. But when you have that documentation, that is your gold. Because when you need to sit down with a principal or a parent, you want to come prepared and you want to be able to tell the parent, I am on your side. Because teachers, and this is another thing that I learned very quickly, no one goes into education because they love working with parents. No one does, right? <laughs> we do it because we love the kids. And when we have to sit with parents, it's very, very awkward. And parents will always defend their kids. That's just, you know, not just human nature, but even, you know, just living being animals defend their kids too. So it's just deeply ingrained with us to, you know, to defend our kids. And when we come into school as a parent, we're just, you know, until you can prove that you're on my kid's team, I'm going to be vicious with you. You know, like that's just the way it goes. And, and we've all, ex you know, all of us that work in schools have experienced that. The comical so part is I even see it on the personal side. Like when my partner goes into the school to meet with the principal to talk about one of the kids, I'm like, calm down. Everyone you're about to meet with is like <laughs> eager to help, taking time out of the night. They're like, no, I really need to hear X, Y, Z. And I'm like, what? Okay, parents, we're with you. Like, there's yeah. no animosity. Yeah, and it's, and it's like, the truth. It's the truth. But the so parents funny. don't. They don't. They don't get it until you can prove it to them. They they're mm -hmm. not going to buy it. So you have to be really careful with that. And here's the part where there's more because we're also swiping down when a kid is acting out, and acting out is as as we all know intellectually. But when it comes to the classroom and with all the different things going on, it's hard to remember this. It's a cry for help. When kids are acting out, it's because they need help, right? And those are the primary criticisms that happen in the classroom, right? So every time a kid is acting out, you swipe down on them. And every time you compliment them, you swipe up on their picture. Now, the ratio of the compliments to criticism is reflected in a border color around each and every kid. So when a kid has more down swipes than up swipes, they will have a red circle around their picture. But that is not an indication to penalize the child. That is a reminder to the teacher, you need to catch this kid being good. This kid needs to know that you see them in positive ways and give them more upswipes. They may need more positive support than all the other kids in the classroom because they're struggling. And then as you give them more encouragement and you swipe up on their picture, when the ratio becomes neutral, one to one or better, the border color will, will turn orange. At a three to one ratio, it'll turn yellow. At a five to one ratio, it'll turn blue. And at a seven to one ratio, it'll turn green. And we have a little ribbon along the side of the screen that has that gradation. So you know where you're holding and you know the various different levels. But you can actually look at your classroom at any minute of the day in real time and know which kids need your attention the most based on two really critical you know, criteria. Number one, at, 
equality. Everyone should be seen every day. And number two, equity. The kids that are struggling need more. And if you want to have good relationships with them, you want them to have at the very least the yellow border, at the very least, preferably the blue and ideally the green. And we just spoke recently with a school leader that told us that kids in, in his school were that had the green border with those teachers, those kids performed academically far and away better than all the other kids in the class. It was just amazing to see that correlation. Moshe, I had to tell you, I I don't know if this is just a timely conversation or if at any point this would have hit a nerve, but I literally have a million questions. I could talk about this for eternity because I love your approach with this. I love your your expertise coming into the conversation, but then also the focus on teachers having the tools to be successful is something that I am, oh my God, so in awe and 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 excited for our community to see. So before we wrap up our conversation here, I hate that we're running out of time because this I know needs to continue in conversation, but tell me where our community can can engage with you and can engage with this program um, because I would love to find some way to get this in the hands of our community members so that they can do this really valuable self-reflection to know that we're not just focusing on relationships because it's a buzzword, but we actually have now the information to do well in this area and do an audit of our own success in it. And I, I am such a, I love this. I love this. I couldn't love this more. So tell me where we can get connected. Thanks. So first of all, we have a website, classstars.com. So you could check that out. Class stars is one word and it's spelled with two S's in the middle, not three, not one. So it's C-A-C-L-A-S-S-T-A-R-S.com. You can also email me directly, Moshe at classstars.com. Very, very simple. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. So, and Instagram too, I think. Instagram is just a general class stars, but you can, you know, look for me on Twitter, Moshe underscore class stars or, um, LinkedIn or Facebook. We're connected, I think, on Facebook, Ray, so we can definitely uh, connect there. I think I'm in the Teach Better group, so you can reach out to me there. But the best way is to email me. You know, I'll get the email and I'll respond and we can set you up with, you know, one of our assistants to help you get started. The initial onboarding, you know, is, is you know, could be a little bit tedious, you know, to enter all the inf student information, but we do sync up with Google Classroom. And when you want to do it school-wide, we have, you know, all different kinds of packages to work with your school you know, if you want to start love small it. or big, we're very flexible that way. Don't forget when you reach out to Moshe to name drop the Teach Better team oh, or sure. you name drop my name. Let let them know that you connected through us. There's yes. got to be some perks to that somewhere down the road. <laughs> so keep them updated. And friends, don't forget anytime we have friends that you are connecting with within the Teach Better family, if you ever struggle to find their websites or get their email information, just reach out to one of us, especially myself here on the team. We would love to get you easily connected to them and make this experience as easy as possible. We hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Hopefully it's got you thinking and I'm excited to hear all your feedback in the comments. We will see you very, very soon. Have an incredible, incredible Monday. Bye guys. Thank you. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.